Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Some of you may have seen the video I made a few weeks ago about narcissistic family roles. This is Narcissistic Family Roles Part 2 with a focus on blended families. Again, as always, thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe to keep getting this. And again, if you haven't seen the original video, you can go back and look in our list and look for uh, Narcissistic Family Roles and you can watch the first one. When we talk about narcissistic family roles, we talk about specific roles a person may take in a family. The scapegoat, the golden child, the invisible child. But somebody very wisely pointed out to me, someone I was talking to, he highlighted the issue. He's like, mm, there's something interesting here. Because he's like, I completely agreed with everything you said. But he said, where it gets tricky is if parents divorce, and then that child has to live in two different family systems. In this particular case, the parents divorced, both parents remarried. And he said what was interesting was in one family system, he was the golden child, and in the other family system, he was the scapegoat. And that might be something that some of you might be resonating to. And in fact, when you saw the original video, you might have said, hmm, I actually had, my parents did divorce. And when I lived with my one narcissistic parent, I had this role. When I lived with one narcissistic parent, I had that role. Or after your parents split up, it might have been that you had a healthy parent and a narcissistic parent. And with the healthy parent, you got to actually take on a healthy, balanced role. And that with the narcissistic parent, you still stayed in your original role. This can be really destabilizing for a child because can you imagine that going back and forth between the role of golden child scapegoat, golden child scapegoat, neither of those roles are healthy for a child to be in. But then if you have to keep going back and forth between the two, it would be so unsettling. When parents divorce, when you have one narcissistic parent and those parents divorce, odds are you are going to keep the role you had with that parent. So if you were the sort of the scapegoat with them, you may stay with that. This person also pointed out an even more interesting twist. In this particular case, I believe it was for the father, he was the golden child. For the mother, he was the scapegoat. Upon, a, um, upon the father remarrying, he became the scapegoat for the stepmother and remained the golden child for the father. Now you're adding confusion on top of confusion. The point in, in sort of sharing this kind of a video is these roles, scapegoats, golden child, invisible child, and you know whether or not you were the victim of things like family mobbing and people really kind of coming at you all at once, these are things that shape you into adulthood. And it can be a lot more clear and linear for a person who's a golden child. And we've already laid out what can happen if you're the golden child and what that does in terms of the, the, the stuff about where the person may become grandiose and narcissistic themselves, but they also may experience survivor guilt and anxiety for the scapegoat who often feels like they're not good enough. And the other thing to remember is for that golden child, they often have imposter syndrome. What if I get found out? But when a child has to hold multiple of these roles, then they're taking in even more anxiety, even more issues around what exactly is my identity, even more issues of anxiety around, around intrafamilial relationships. These roles are roles that are given to a child. They don't ask for them. A child always tries to please his or her parent. And when a child pleases a parent and they are valued for that, you can easily see how that golden child dynamic can unfold. But if a child tries equally hard to win that parent over and they're still dismissed under the scapegoat dynamic, that's a real feeling of helplessness that can dog that child into adulthood. These children didn't ask for these roles. Children are really easy in most cases. All they really want is to be loved, heard, connected to, feel safe, and be understood. That's all any child is asking for. In a narcissistic family system, they do not get those things consistently. Remember that in a narcissistic family system, you can have one healthy patient. And when parents divorce in that system, the healthy parent can actually create a really nice, healthy, balanced space for that child. But if that child has to keep flipping back and forth between maybe going back to the other parent and being the golden child or the scapegoat, or even both in that new family, being the scapegoat for a step parent, being the golden child for their original parent, and then going back to a healthy system, 
This is really confusing and destabilizing for a kid. Some of you may have survived something like this, where you had multiple roles of golden child, scapegoat, invisible child, all within one complicated family system. Always remember that those childhood roles are not things you selected. They were placed upon you by narcissistic parents who just weren't up to the job of parenting. Those roles do not define you. You are not invisible. You are no one's scapegoat and no one's right all the time. So there are really no golden children out there. It's my hope that even if you came from a narcissistic family system, even if you came from a complex narcissistic family system where you took on multiple roles or I should say given multiple roles that you don't in adulthood, let that define who you are. So as much as we try to make this simple, so that you can be the scapegoat, you can be the golden child, or you can be the invisible child. It is understood that there are some family systems out there where some children are given multiple roles and I'm aware of that. And if that is more clear of you, understand that that might even be more hard, more difficult than having just one of those roles. But they don't define you. Go out, shed those labels, be your whole self. That difficult childhood was difficult, but again, using that Rumi, going back to that Rumi quote, the wound is a place where the light enters you. Those childhood hurts hurt, but they can also really if you're able to work with them and think about them, places of tremendous empathy and compassion, not only for yourself, but for others. Thanks for listening. I hope that clarifies that. Those of you who grew up in blended families, uh, so you have a place to understand that your story could have been actually even more complicated. Thank you again. Please subscribe, hit that bell, get more content, tune in for our lives on Tuesday. We look forward to bringing you more content.